But what I find interesting is that this section right here is where uh, that guy Bill Smith got shot who lived in our building. And uh, since that accident, since his murder here, the alley at uh, 18th and uh, Michigan right here, they have changed, they have repaved it twice. This is the second time they just did this yesterday. And I'm wondering if it's because of that. Because they did do the uh, sidewalks. But they made a point of coming in and redoing all this because this is exactly where it happened. So I'm assuming that uh, they dug it up the first time, repaved it. And then they just uh, did this the second time to erase any memory of it. I find that interesting. We're walking to the Dunkin' Donuts here. Beautiful July day. <clears throat> Had a great weekend. Um, it was very interesting, you know, we threw this party. And... Uh, I invited like all the people from my company, Chatter Globe. I invited friends from all over town. And um, I had about 10 people show up, <laughs> which is fine. 10 people I love, 10 dear friends. But, uh, you know, in this age of social media, I think it's a lot easier for people to wish you a happy birthday on Facebook than it is to actually come to your home and celebrate your birthday at a party you're throwing. And I could be, oh, poor me. I mean, nobody from Shattered Globe came, which I thought was hilarious. Not a person showed up from Shattered Globe. Um, except for... Darren Glass, who was an understudy, uh, who was Patrick Thornton's understudy, in for Peter Pan and Patrick Thornton. They were the only two people associated with the theater in any way that came to my birthday party. Now, you'd think I'd be better or unhappy, and I really don't care. I think it's hilarious. You know, I learned a lot about a lot of the people that I've been working with uh, in the last couple weeks through their behavior, through their actions, through their words to me. So, I think it's sad, in a way. But, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm kind of done with Chicago. It's a very small town, it's a very petty town. And, uh, you know, back in the 90s, when the work was still about the work, I mean, those days are over now. Everywhere I go, there's some fucking truck. I would love to get an acting or a teaching gig somewhere. Uh, it's just not the same town anymore. When, when Steppenwolf is banning critics that they don't like and accusing the press of being institutionally racist. You know that you're uh, you're in a politically correct time that's not really good for theater anywhere, especially here in Chicago. Chicago is supposed to be the best theater town, but right now we are not acting that way. All right, let's get some coffee. Enough of this political talk. It was a fun weekend. Spider-Man Homecoming was really good. You know what the best thing about Spider-Man Homecoming was? Zendaya. <laughs> Who would have thunk? And like all Spider-Mans, you know, it's like... It's great when he's Peter Parker, but then when he's Spider-Man, not so good. Noisy and edited so you can't really tell what's going on. It's, you know... And then we saw Planet of the Apes on uh, War for the Planet of the Apes on Sunday. First half hour was awesome, and then they get into it like a concentration camp. But it was a very derivative movie. 
War of the Planet of the Apes, War for the Planet of the Apes. You know, it was kind of like uh, Apocalypse Now, squashed with Bridge on the River Kwai, squashed with The Great Escape. It was like a combination of, you know, uh, World War II films, escape films, prison camp films, and uh, and a little bit of the old-fashioned Planet of the Apes thrown in for good measure. But they could have edited about 20 minutes out of that whole concentration camp scene and it still would have been a much better movie all right we'll talk to you let's go in and see some uh, get some coffee